Hey, hello everyone! Today we are diving deep into the world of prepositions, those seemingly small words that hold huge power in our language. Ever felt confused about why to use in versus on for a time? Or maybe you struggle placing the preposition in your say? Worry no more, this presentation will break down prepositions for you, making sentence building pro. So, for today's mission, let's delve those little language ninjas called prepositions. Are you excited to know what prepositions are? But before that, we will start with a lesson outline first, where we will be breaking down this lesson into three key parts. So first, what is a preposition? In this part, we will unveil the secret identity of prepositions and how it works in sentences. Second, the types of prepositions, where we will buckle up as we explore the different categories these tiny words can belong to. And the third will be the importance of prepositions, where we will unlock where using prepositions correctly is crucial for clear communication. So grab your pencils or ball pens and get ready to master those prepositions. What is a preposition? A preposition is a short word that link nouns, pronouns, or even phrases to other words in a sentence. Prepositions might seem like tiny and significant words, but don't be fooled by their size. Prepositions are the unsung heroes of grammar, playing a crucial role in building clear, concise, and well-structured sentences. Think of them as tiny bridges, helping ideas flow smoothly. They are usually quite short and sit right in front of a noun. Here's the catch. Prepositions are a closed class in the English language, which means that unlike nouns or verbs which keep growing, we have a set number of prepositions. And now, let's go over the different types of prepositions. We have four types of prepositions in this video. And first, it is the preposition of time. Next is the preposition of place. Third is the preposition of movement. And lastly is the preposition of manner. We will dig deeper about these types in their following discussions. Let's focus first on the preposition of time. Have you ever wondered how we talk about when things happen? The secret weapon is a special group of words called prepositions of time. These tiny prepositions of time help to link nouns or pronouns with a specific time value. Let's imagine them as a little bridges connecting the what or the noun or pronoun to the when which is the time value in your sentence. But the preposition of time aren't limited to just minutes and hours. They can handle longer stretches too. Also, prepositions of time functions as indicator as to what point of time did an event occur. And here we have 10 common prepositions of time. First is for, which it indicates the length of time, point in time, and the frequency or how often something happens or continues. Second one is before, which refers to something happening earlier than another point in time and it also indicates a sequence or order of events. Then we have after, which indicates that something happens later than another point in time. It establishes a sequence or order of events, just like before, but in an opposite direction. Next is the during, which indicates that something happens within a period of time. Next is until, which indicates that something continues up to a specific point in time. It sets a limit or endpoint for an action or event. Since, which also indicates something has started at a specific point in the past and continues. Next is the from, which indicates the starting point of the duration, event, or simply mark a specific point in the past as a reference. Next is to, which indicates a point in time or suggests continuing an action up to a certain point. And throughout, which refers to something happening continuously or repeatedly during a whole period of time. It emphasizes that something is spread out across the entire time frame. And the last but not the least is within, which indicates that something happens at some point during a specific time frame but without pinpointing an exact moment. Alright class, after knowing about prepositions of time and its example words, we will pick three examples of it and we will use it in a sentence. So first, I ate breakfast during the morning. Here, during indicates a period within which something happens. So, the preposition during tells us that the action of eating breakfast occurred within a broader time frame of the morning. Number two, I've been working since 9 o'clock this morning. In this sentence, since is the preposition of time. So this marks the starting point of an action or event. So since tells us when the action of working began, which is at 9 o'clock this morning. And number three, 
we will be on a vacation for one week. Here, for is the preposition of time which indicates the duration of an action or event. So, for tells us how long the action of being on vacation will last, which is one week. Alright class, now let's move on and explore the prepositions of place. When talking about preposition of place, what comes to your mind? Place, location, alright. These are words that tell us where something or someone is specifically located. They're like little arrows in a map, helping us navigate our surroundings. Here are the 10 most common prepositions of place and let's break them down. First, in. When we say in, we're talking about something being inside a space. Second, on. When it refers to something being physically on top of a surface. At. If it is used to pinpoint a specific location or point. By. When we say by, we mean something is next to or beside something else. Near indicates that something is close to another thing but not necessarily touching it. Followed by between, which tells us that something is in the middle of two other things. Next, when we say behind, we mean something is located at the back of something else. Followed by above, which refers to something being at a higher level than something else. Next is below, which is the opposite of above and means something is at a lower level. And finally, beside, which means something is next to or alongside something else. Understanding these prepositions of place helps us describe where things are in relation to each other and creates a mental map of our surroundings. Alright, and now we're going to look at three examples of prepositions of place in action. Let's have our first example. The shoes are under the coffee table. The preposition present in sentence is under. When we say under, we mean something is positioned below or beneath another object. This tells us that the shoes are located beneath the coffee table. So when we say under, we mean something is positioned below or beneath another object. Let's proceed to our next example. The dog is behind the lamp. The behind indicates that something is positioned at the back or rear of another object. This tells us that the dog is located at the back of the lamp. And lastly, the bird is above the table. Above. It tells us that something is positioned at a higher level than another object. This means that the bird is located at a higher elevation compared to the table. Alright, let's gear up for the next slide, but before we dive in, I've got to know, are you all strapped in and ready to uncover the next preposition? I bet you are! So we are now going to explore prepositions of movement. When we talk about prepositions of movement, these are words that describe how something or someone moves from one place to another, emphasizing the direction of that movement. Now we're going to look at the 10 most common prepositions of movement and what they convey. First. To indicates something towards a specific destination or endpoint. It highlights the direction of movement towards a particular place. Second, from, when it shows movement away or starting point from a particular location. It highlights the origin or starting point of the movement. Third is into. When we say into, it implies movement towards the interior or inside of something. It emphasizes the action of entering or moving within a space. The fourth one is through, means movement from one side or end of something to the other side. It emphasizes passage or movement from one point to another. The fifth one is along. So when we say along, it demonstrates movement in a parallel direction to something else. It highlights movement in the same direction as something else, often in close proximity. The sixth one is across. If it conveys movement from one side to the other side of something, it emphasizes movement over surface or area to reach the opposite side. The seventh one is onto, which suggests movement to a position on top of something. It highlights movement towards a surface or object and onto it. The eighth one is off, when it expresses movement away or descent from a surface or object. It emphasizes movement from a higher position to a lower position or away from something. The next one is over. So when we say over, it shows movement across or something, often emphasizing movement at a higher level than the starting point. And lastly, up, 
when it expresses movement in an upward direction, often emphasizing elevation or ascent from a lower position to a higher one. Understanding these propositions of movement helps us describe how things or people travel from one place to another, highlighting the direction and destination of their movement. Alright, and now we are down to examples of propositions of movement in action. Here we have our first example. The girl went up the stairs. In this sentence, up is a proposition of movement. It tells us the direction of the girl's movement. She's going from a lower point to a higher point, ascending the stairs. Right? Okay, let's proceed to our next example. They walked along the streets. Here, along is a proposition of movement. It indicates that the movement is happening parallel to something else, in this case, the streets. And lastly, the ball rolled into the box. In this sentence, into is a proposition of movement. It shows us that the movement is going from outside the box to inside it, indicating a change in location. So now we are going to discuss about prepositions of manner. Prepositions of manner are all about how a certain thing happened or is done. They are sometimes referred to as prepositions of method or even prepositions of styles. These prepositions essentially join words in a sentence connecting nouns, phrases, or pronouns to other terms in a particular sentence. They provide a clear picture of the method or style in which something is done. Now let's go through the eight most common prepositions of manner. First, we have with. This preposition is used to indicate the instrument, means, or method by which an action is performed. It can also denote companionship or association. Second is for. It is used to express purpose, reason, or intention. It can also indicate the recipient of an action. Third is of. This preposition can indicate origin, cause or possession. It is often used to express a characteristic, feature, or part of something. Now let's move on to the fourth one, which is by. So it is often used to indicate the agent of an action in passive sentences. It can also denote the method, means, or manner of doing something. The fifth one is like. This preposition is used to make comparisons or to give examples. It suggests similarity between two things. The sixth one is us. It is used in comparisons to suggest equality or to describe a role or capacity. The seventh one is in. This preposition can indicate a state, condition, or manner. It can also denote a method by which something is done. The eighth one is on. It is used to refer to a state, condition, or manner. It can also denote the method by which something is done. Remember, the use of these prepositions can greatly vary depending on the context of the sentence. They help to add more detail and clarity to the manner in which an action is performed. And now, here are some examples of prepositions of manner in the sentence. So first sentence, Donna is walking with her mother. So the preposition of manner here is with. So the preposition with is used to denote involvement or accompaniment. It can indicate tools used in an action or companionship in activity. So in the sentence, with is indicating that Dana's action of walking involves another person, her mother. This preposition helps us understand that the action is not solitary, but shared. Our next example is that Leia dances like a swan. So the preposition in this sentence is like. The preposition like is used to make comparisons. It's a way of relating one thing to another by highlighting shared qualities or characteristics. Like is drawing a comparison between Leia's dancing and a swan. This suggests that Leia's dancing has characteristics that remind the observer of a swan, perhaps in terms of grace and fluidity or elegance. And for the last sentence, the vegetables were caught by my mother. So the preposition here is by. The preposition of manner by is often used to indicate the agent or doer in passive sentences. It shows who or what is responsible for an action. By is used to show that the mother is the one who performed the action of cutting. This preposition gives us information about who is responsible for the action, providing a clearer picture of the situation. 
So now we are going to tackle about why preposition is important. So prepositions are an essential part of language and play a crucial role in communication. The importance of prepositions can be summarized in the following point. First, it indicates position and location. Prepositions play a crucial role in indicating the position or location of objects or people in relation to other things. They help us understand where something is located or positioned. Second one is it express time. Prepositions are essential in expressing time and temporal relationships. They help us understand when something happened or will happen. Third is it shows direction. Prepositions are used to indicate the direction of movement or the destination of an action. They help us understand where something or someone is going. The fourth one is that Prepositions connect ideas. Prepositions are used to connect ideas and provide a logical relationship between different parts of a sentence. They help us understand how different elements are related to each other. The fifth one is that it conveys instrumentality or means. Prepositions are important in conveying the instrument or means by which an action is performed. They help us understand how something is done or achieved. The sixth one is that it describes relationships. Prepositions are used to describe relationships between people, objects, or ideas. They help us understand the connection or association between different elements. The seventh one is that it clarifies meaning. Prepositions are crucial in clarifying the meaning of a sentence or phrase. They provide additional information and context to help us understand the intended message. In conclusion, prepositions are important because they add precision, clarity, and context to our language. They help us express relationships, describe actions, and provide essential details about time, location, movement, and manner. Without prepositions, our sentences would lack coherence and understanding. So now that you already know about prepositions and the different types of prepositions, we are going to test your understanding. Let's have a short practice. So you are going to identify what is the missing preposition of each sentence. I will give you 5 seconds to create or to pick an answer and after 5 seconds, I will reveal the right answer. Are you ready? I guess you are. Let's start. So number one, look down the painting on the wall. Your timer starts now. Time's up. The correct answer is at look at the painting on the wall. Number two, he has cut his finger blank and knife. Your timer starts now. So time's up. The correct answer is with he has cut his finger with a knife. Number three, the novel was written blank a famous author. Your timer starts now. All right, time's up. So the correct answer is by the novel was written by a famous author. Number four, he will arrive blank 7 a.m. Your timer starts now. Time's up. The correct answer is at he will arrive at 7 a.m. Number 5. Trains pass blank the tunnel. Your timer starts now. Time's up. The correct answer is through. Trains pass through the tunnel. 6. There are dirty spots blank the floor. Your timer starts now. Alright, so the correct answer is on. There are dirty spots on the floor. 7. The cat jumped blank the fence. Your timer starts now. Time's up. The correct answer is over. The cat jumped over the fence. Number 8. She walked blank the park. Your timer starts now. Time's up. The correct answer is through. She walked through the park. Number 9. The restaurant is blank. The office. Your timer starts now.
Alright, so the correct answer is near. The restaurant is near the office. Number 10. He is walking block the road. The timer starts now. Time's up. The correct answer is along. He is walking along the road. So thank you for listening and thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new and that could be all. Bye!